What will the Chicago Bears do tomorrow night? What is up, guys? I'm back with the Chicago Bears offseason update videos. I hope all of you guys are doing well and getting ready for the draft. Okay, it's less than, by the time you're watching this video, it's probably going to be less than 24 hours until draft time. Okay, the 2021 NFL draft, Ryan Pace and the Chicago Bears have a chance to add some new, fresh, young talent to this team that badly needs it right now. Okay, going 8 and 8 two years in a row. Um, making the playoffs this year, but being a one and done, missing the playoffs the year before that, it's not been a good time in Chicago. And Ryan Pace is hopefully gonna try to change that. And I'll be honest, guys, this year's draft, I I honestly have no idea what direction the Bears are gonna go in. Okay, usually I can kind of sense what players, what position groups the Bears are gonna target, but this year I honestly have no idea because I don't know what the Bears are doing at this point in time. Okay, are we trying to rebuild? Are we trying to win now? Do Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, you know, only have this year to prove themselves or do they have multiple years? Like the state of the Bears franchise, nobody really knows like what we're doing right now, which makes it so hard to predict what we're going to do in the draft this year. As you guys all know, we have a first round pick for the first time since 2018, back when we took Roquan Smith. So having the first round pick, it's going to be crucial that Ryan Pace gets it right. OK, because three out of the four first round picks he's had in Chicago have pretty much been bust. OK, Kevin White. Never really played for us. Uh, Leonard Floyd, It's he's a good player now, but he wasn't really an elite player with us. He was an okay player with us, so probably not the best selection either. And Mitchell Trubisky, we all know what happened, okay? He's on a different team now. The Buffalo Bills being a backup behind Josh Allen. So a 25% success rate on your first round picks is horrible, okay? Most GMs would get fired for that, especially taking a guy like Mitchell Trubisky, you know, swinging hard on the quarterback and missing out big time. But Ryan Pace's mid-round picks are what has saved him so far, okay? In the third, fourth, fifth rounds, he's consistently, every single year, been able to find pretty much star or borderline star talent, you know, in those later rounds, okay? He's found guys like, you know, Jalen Johnson. Last year, he found Darnell Mooney in the fifth round. Early on in his career, he found Eddie Jackson late, you know, in the late rounds. He found Tariq Cohen. He's found Adrian Amos, Jordan Howard. Like, he's a fantastic drafter in the middle of the draft, but early on is where he really does struggle, and that cannot continue anymore if he wants to continue being general manager of the Chicago Bears, okay? You have to hit on your first round picks because they have the fifth year option, so you have an extra year of, you know, having the rookie contract for them, and most of the superstars honestly do come from the first round, statistically speaking, so Ryan Pace needs to get it right this year, whatever he decides to do. Now, let's look at what his options are for this year, okay? So, we have the number 20 overall pick uh, pretty much the end of the first round so from there we can either trade up we can stay put in number 20 or we can trade down to acquire more picks and let's kind of assess the likelihood of each scenario okay so let's say you know ryan pace wants to trade up who would we trade up for presumably it would only be for a quarterback okay i could not see us trading up for any other position because we don't have the luxury right now guys okay we don't have a crazy amount of draft capital we have too many needs we cannot trade up for any position besides quarterback. And if you're trading up for a quarterback, the only ones I would really trade up for are Justin Fields and Trey Lance. Mac Jones, to me, if he falls to number 20, I would be okay with taking him there. Maybe even trade up a little bit to like pick 15, pick 16, where you're not giving up too much. But if you trade into the top 10 for Mac Jones, I'm sorry, that's not going to work out at all. Okay, Mac Jones needs a good team around him. He needs an you know elite offensive line good play caller, and I don't think the Bears had those things right now, so we can't reach for a guy like Mac Jones, but if you want to reach a little bit for a guy like Justin Fields, Trey Lance, guys who have a ton of potential, probably as much potential as Trevor Lawrence does, and guys who could maybe succeed without the best team around them, I would 100% be okay with doing that. In fact, if Ryan Pace has the opportunity to draft Justin Fields, I mean, they're saying that Justin Fields' stock is dropping a lot. For some reason, I don't really know why. Okay, this guy against Clemson, you saw what he did last season. He had a fantastic season, one of the most accurate deep passes. If Justin Fields somehow does slip, I would want Ryan Pace to make that trade up because, guys, without a quarterback, you are completely irrelevant in the NFL. Okay, right now we have Andy Dalton. Nobody's going to be talking about us this season because Andy Dalton does not move the needle for us. Okay, but a young quarterback could give us hope and eventually 
you know, make us a better football team. So, yeah, for Trey Lance, Justin Fields, if one of them does fall, I would be totally okay with trading up for them. Maybe to pick number six would take a lot. With the Dolphins, that would be a haul for the Dolphins. But if you want to trade up to, like, pick number eight, for example, with the Carolina Panthers, that's a trade we could definitely do and hopefully not give up our entire future. If the Bears do decide to stay put, which is a, you know, a possibility for sure, okay, because there's a ton of talented players that are going to be on the board, also pick number 20, um, I don't think we'll be taking a quarterback because I don't see any of the top five being available. And at pick number 20, taking Kellen Mond or Davis Mills will be an enormous reach, okay? So I really hope Ryan Pace does not take one of those mid-rounders at the end of the first round because that would be a massive overpay, okay, in draft capital. But if you look at the other guys that might be available, we might go after an offensive tackle, which I hope we do because we do need help on the right side of our offensive line. Okay, right now we only have Charles Leno on the left side. We don't really have anybody good on the right side. So if you take a guy like Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State, this guy is tough, this guy is physical, this guy is mean, and he would make our offensive line better probably for at least 10 years. So I would love picking Tevin Jenkins there. We badly do need that help. Um, you could also you know, take a guy like maybe Elijah Vera Tucker if he's still available. I think he'll probably be off the board at this point, but if he's available... That could be an option for us. Uh, Walker Little is going to be on the board. I think he's probably going to slide, though, a little bit because he hasn't played in a long time. So maybe Walker Little is an option. You know, Dylan Radons, he's viewed by many as a second rounder, but he could be in play, too, if he's on the board and other people aren't. You know, Samuel Cosme from Texas. So there's a lot of offensive tackles that I would actually be okay with going after. Um, The top ones, like Penny Sewell, uh, you know, Rashawn Slater, Christian Derisaw, they're probably going to be off the board at this point. So we probably aren't going to get, you know, the top three elite ones. But any ones after that, they're still really great players. So I'd be okay with taking them. If you look at some of the receivers we could draft at pick number 20, the only ones I'd really go after are Rashad Bateman, maybe Elijah Moore, maybe Terrace Marshall Jr. But anybody after that, I feel like would be a reach. Rondell Moore, I do like, but I feel like in the first round at pick number 20, he would definitely be a reach. Same with Kadarius Toney. Um, he's probably, in my opinion, a second rounder. So... Rashad Bateman, though, for sure. I mean, this guy could be the next Allen Robinson replacement. I would be okay with taking him. If you look at the other positions, I think really the only other positions we would attack at this uh, spot would be cornerback because, you know, everywhere else we do have solid players for the most part, okay? Maybe if a really good linebacker or somebody does fall to us, like Micah Parsons, which some people say might slip a little bit because of the insane offensive talent available in this draft class, I would 100% be okay with taking Parsons, okay? Because this guy could be a great Danny Trevathan replacement in the middle of our defense and him with Roquan Smith, we'd probably have the best linebacking core in the entire NFL. Um, And if you look at the co uh, cornerbacks, obviously, like I talked about, there's a lot that we could pick at pick number 20. Uh, a guy like Caleb Farley, if he does fall, he could be available for us. And a lot of people think he could be the best corner in this draft class, but he has fallen because of injuries. So it would be a risky pick, but kind of like Jalen Johnson, if he does stay healthy, it could turn out for the better. Greg Newsom could be there for us. The guy from Northwestern, he's a fantastic player too. Um, you know, Asante Samuel Jr. from Florida State. Maybe J.C. Horn if he's still on the board. I feel like he'd probably get taken by now, but we could get lucky and he could fall. But there are a lot of talented corners available for us um, if we want to go after that. Now, I do hope we draft offense first because, like I mentioned in a lot of my videos, you know, you need to draft offense first if you want to have a good offense. And obviously, the Bears have not had a good offense in a long time in Chicago. So I would hope they attack offense first, but if a fantastic player like Farley, like Parsons does fall, I guess I would be okay with Ryan Pace taking them. And finally, the last option that Ryan Pace has is to trade down, which I feel like is not very likely at all because Ryan Pace during his entire time in Chicago, he's actually never traded down from his first pick ever, okay? In seven years, he's never traded down. So I don't see that happening this time either because usually he likes to go after his guy and his guy is usually beyond, you know, in front of our where our pick actually is. So that's why he trades up all the time and doesn't actually trade back. But if he does decide to somehow trade back this year, which would probably be smarter for the future, there's a lot of talented guys that could still be available near the end of the first round. Okay, everybody that I already mentioned earlier in this video, they could still be available. Guys like Caleb Farley, if he falls due to his back injuries, he could be available. Um, You know, the receivers that I talked about could be available. But also guys like... You know, Nick Bolton from Mizzou, um, he could maybe be an option there if you want to take him. Rondell Moore at the end of the first round, I would probably be okay with taking. Uh, Dylan Radons would be a better option too at the end of the first round. Like, there's a lot of guys here that 
are still very talented that could go early second, late first, that I would be, you know, okay with the Bears grabbing um, if they do want to trade back. So um, most likely, I don't think he's going to trade back because that's what Ryan Pace is like. He doesn't like to trade back, especially early on. But if he does, you know, we do have a lot of good options available to us. But yeah, guys, it's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. I just wanted to do a quick, you know, brief preview of the draft, the first round, what Ryan Pace could do. Um, as you guys already saw, I did my mock draft video a couple days ago. So check that out if you haven't already. And also, I will be live streaming my reaction to the first pick that the Bears do make. So be sure to tune in for that. I hope it is for Justin Fields because I'm going to have a crazy ass reaction if we actually do get Justin Fields in a Bears uniform. I really hope it happens. Not very, very likely, but I'm praying to God it somehow happens. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. But as always, bear down. <laughs>